You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast from ascully.com. Your weekly look at movies, video games, and more brought to you by your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Welcome, listeners. Hello. Welcome to After The Show. Welcome to my host, Sid Talk. Mm. Co-host. Is that what you are? Co-host? Are we hosting? We're hosting a podcast. <laughs> Are you aware of what's happening? <laughs> no, I don't consider that. <laughs> I'm talking into a into the air. There's you've put a microphone in front of me, and uh, that's it. I'm not sure if that equals hosting, but I think you're a co-host. Uh, put that on my resume. Yes, <laughs> the co-host of After the Show Movie Podcast. But the before the After the Show discussion was you fixing the audio again, which we're not going to go into because it's super boring, and also me playing my city skyline, which is also super boring. <laughs> Don't be dismissive. <laughs> <laughs> Only I am allowed to do that. All right. So on Saturday, October the 15th, this is after the show, 758, we're a movie review podcast. We look at a new movie every week. This week, we're looking at the movie Beast. It's a 2022 movie. It's actually on Blu-ray and streaming and all that stuff right now. It's rated R from our friends at Universal who let us watch a copy or they sent us a copy or something. They did something. <laughs> they were involved in the transaction. So, Sid Talk, give us the synopsis of the movie Beast. Cujo, but a lion and no rabies. Actually, it was one of the first horror books that I ever read. Oh, I never read it. No, I did. I read that in Christine's draft. I don't read books. I just watch movies and television. Well, aren't I more highbrow than you? Yes. Yes. (laughs) I have no no problem with that. Yes, I read lots of books. I have mahogany wooden shelves. <laughs> and I. Uh, so, what's the synopsis on the box? A father and his two teenage daughters find themselves hunted by a massive rogue lion, intent on proving that the savannah has only one apex predator. Oh, I see. So, they spoiled that a little bit right there. Because I think when he's giving the little speech about the lions, no. Okay, so this movie is about poaching in Africa. So, there's poachers. There's the anti-poacher, who's also the game warden-ish type guy. And then there's our family coming to visit because they're from Africa, from South Africa. Is that where they are? I don't, I, I I don't think quite he said. Clear. He just said, girls, look, it's Africa. We're he in Africa. Even, he didn't even say where specifically, which is a little bit odd because it's a very large place. It's a, so I thought when our friend, Uncle Martin, was giving us the little talk like, the lions have been poached so much they now know that we are the bad guys and they're hunting us. So this guy's this guy, the the lion, who is the beast, his entire pride has been murdered by poachers. Well, he knows. I mean, animals know. He's seen humans with weapons. He doesn't know what they are, but you know what I'm saying. And now he's like Jaws. Is it Jaws four? This time it's personal. Is that what we're talking about? I don't know. I only watched Jaws 1, 2, and 3. One of them is like Jaws, this time it's personal, right? So this shark apparently knows this family. (laughs) Garbage. So this lion just knows humans are bad. And so he is the beast coming to get them all. So what did you think of Beast? Well, actually, if you look at the cover of this movie, it's called Idris Elba, Beast. That's the actual name of the movie. I enjoyed it. It had its little bit of, like, uh, bad CGI, which is unfortunate. Other than that, I just really enjoyed the family dynamic. It's nothing new. Father, the mother has died of cancer. The two girls are not, they're not super close to the dad because the parents were separated. Da, da, da. So I've got that. But the girls are awesome. I like the idea of highlighting the poaching situation and... Is gorgeous, like absolutely gorgeous, except for the bad CGI. The yeah. lion CGI was fine. Yeah. Person CGI was really terrible. But I just really enjoyed it. I really like the, I mean, but it did give me instant memories of Cujo. Like, seriously, they're in a vehicle. The creature who's frothing at the mouth a little bit comes at the window and comes at the window and shows up at the window like, ah, you know, and 
you're trapped essentially and it's relentless relentless yeah yeah that reminded me of cujo it's also uh tropes the movie right there's every movie trope you can possibly think of well no because i thought making the guy who had the key in his pocket the yellow shirt instead of the red shirt was quite quite a mess there well when the movie started and they got to un- the uncle's place and some they said can we get on your wi-fi and he said there are no cell phones or wi-fi here i was like okay here we go and there's other tropes all the way through it you know there's things that are telegraphed in the movie early on that show up later. Like, oh, look, there's a school. It's abandoned on a hill. <laughs> you know, it's it's a lot of... I noticed a lot of telegraphing. Sometimes you can see the script writing happen. Yes, yes. And I could see it all the time on this movie. I don't know if that makes it bad, but it's pretty basic, isn't it? The actual plot. Uh, definitely. We've got poachers, anti-poacher, dad trying to resolve his issues with his daughter. And the lion is like the symbol of, I don't know what exactly. I'm still trying to figure that out. He seems pretty mild mannered. He's a doctor, which is also very handy, right? We've got the doctor (laughs) right there ready whenever people get slashed by the lion. And they do. But at the beginning, he seems a bit indecisive and sort of mushy and... He's drinking too much and grieving. The girls aren't totally loving him. And so his process of sort of like becoming a decision maker and kind of stepping up. It's an old fashioned idea, right? The dad goes from Mr. Weakling to like Mr. I'll save the day. But that's what they went with here. The movie is essentially an action movie. I would put it along the lines of like Jaws or something like that. Cujo. Some movies that I'll be uh, recommending this week. It's that we're in one place. The thing that I like from the other week, we're just in, you know, we're going to get stuck in one place and there's something horrendous outside that's going to threaten in our lives the entire time. And I didn't feel a lot of the time the threat of the lion. And I don't know if that's because, like, I know it's a CG lion. (laughs) <laughs> and I want them to put a real lion and then put Idris Elba in harm's way. And then that maybe that would be. <laughs> That's not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was times where even though the CG lion looks very good, I couldn't get the Lion King thing out of my head. You know, the one yes. with John Favreau. That there's just enough. Like Uncanny Valley. Then again, I'll be honest, I've never been face to face with a very pissed off, semi-injured probably starving, grieving lion. Right. (laughs) Right? So I don't know what he's supposed to look like when he's coming at you. So there's that. But they do commit to the bloodthirstiness of it. It's an R-rated movie. Yeah. I could imagine this as a PG-13 and they'd skirt around like people. But, I mean, you see people get slashed up, a snake. There's all kinds of... It's more like gore-type violence, like wounds after the fact. Which made me cringe anyway. Yes, it was very cringy. Like, oh my gosh, he's putting a hot knife in his own heart, in his own fresh wound. And I was like, oh, and I don't get squeamish, but that was like, damn. I don't get squeamish when I know it's fake in a movie. So here's a weird thing. In this movie, when he was operating on his own leg, (laughs) I actually got squeamish and had to like kind of look away from it. So that must be how realistic that makeup was. They did it well. Yeah. But like the CG lion... At the beginning, it's established the uncle who takes them on this little tour. He is at one with the lions, isn't he? He's like a lion whisperer. Well, his lions that he raised from cubs, there's another trope. We're announced very early that he knows these lions. He introduces us to them. They wrestle with him. Also CGI, and it wasn't great. And then now we know for the future that these lions will become instrumental in something, right? Yeah, again. Telegraph, <laughs> upfront, everything in this movie, I think. Foreshadowing, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, and there wasn't much, like, surprise for me. I felt, you know, when the uncle... Spoil- There'll be some spoilers, let's say. But when the uncle got injured, I felt for sure he's dead immediately. Yes. I didn't think he'd pull through from that. <laughs> I thought he'd be heroic in some way and save them. And you were right. I was right. The ending, the dad's trying to save the children thing... I kind of figured that out, too. Well, yeah, because he's not going to let the lion have his daughters. Well, I'm just talking about the geography of it. Oh. Because early on they said to us, here's the 
school on the hill, and just below the school on the hill is the Pride Rock where the lions sit. Where the guy, where the uncle's, like, yeah. sons who are lions <laughs> essentially so, are sitting. The last third of the movie where we approach, they're like, oh, look, there's the school. Let's get in the school for safety. I was like, okay, so the lions are right there and there's the school. So it's going to involve this at some point. Either all the lions attack him at once, maybe he's not up against one and he's up against all of them all of a sudden, or there'll be a fight between lion on lion, which we kind of got all of that, right? The what one tropey thing they didn't do, and if you don't know what trope is, it's just like a, a very snotty way of saying, you know, it's like a, a recipe that movies can follow. So there are certain ingredients in certain types of movies. So one of them is, to me, that because we've been told these lions are his friends and they like him and everything, that in the end, the lions will be able to tell the difference between the poachers and the good guys. But they weren't. All they were doing was like, defending their territory with the attacking the lion. So I was glad they didn't do that because I thought, oh, please don't have us have these lions like walk up all brave. Like, I'll save you, Idris Elba, because you're a person, not a poacher, right? I almost felt like that was part of it. Oh, I didn't. He told him earlier, if any lion comes into their territory, they will rip it apart to defend their pride or their territory. Nothing to do with because it was, Id I mean, in fact... If no one had come to save Idris Elba, probably the two lions would have come over and eaten him too. You know that like little scene where it, at the beginning where it showed um, some vultures eating something on a truck? Mm -hmm. Was that supposed to be a dead poacher? Yeah. That the uncle had killed? Oh, maybe. At the time I was like, is the uncle a bad guy? Well, the poachers tell us that he's an anti-poacher. So one thing about the movie I liked is it's it's only nine, it's just over 90 minutes long. It felt very economical. It gets straight to the point very quickly. There's danger pretty quickly. Like any movie of this kind, it descends gets worse and worse as it goes down. And it feels like there's no hope at some point and then there is, right? True. <laughs> I felt like it ended abruptly again, like Fall that we watched the other week, which was a movie that had a Get building up, building up, building up, and then you're like, oh, is that it? Is it over? I felt like this was the same. Yeah, because the leading up was to lure the bad lion into the territory of the two good lions. Yeah. I mean, that was the whole point. Like a two-minute action scene, and then we're done, right? Exactly. So I did feel like it was abrupt. Um, I don't know if that's a bad thing, but if you're, if you're kind of like sat watching it going, oh, this is going to be awesome at the end when there's a giant lion fight between 10 lions and it's going to be cool. I don't think it was that cool, apart from Idris Elba getting mauled by the lion. He Not, really did. He really got mauled by a CG lion, let's say. You said that he looked CG himself? He doesn't look CG. He's 100% CGI. So you need to look at screenshots or go back to that moment when he stands up. He's on the ground. He stands up or he's running from the lion into front of those other lions, right? And then we kind of cut away or he falls and he stands up. All of a sudden he is a mushy, roundy looking video game character. Like 100% like, CGI. Like he came from Fortnite. Yes. <laughs> yes. Idris. But not as good, maybe. <laughs> right. No, I didn't notice. Maybe I was just paying attention to the lions too much. So it kind of missed it. I kind of missed it. Probably but, see, that was smoke and mirrors. A little dazzle over here. Because the there. lions do look real. But occasionally, Compared to what we think we know a lion looks like in person. Yeah, I think they look real. But the thing that makes them not look real sometimes is there's scenes where the one lion is attacking them inside the car and it jumps sometimes from one place to another and it looks like a superhero jump. Like, not, kind like, of, a, yeah. not like a legitimate, like, yeah, I've seen a cat or a lion jump up on something, but this seems to like fly through the air, like actually fly. So there was a bit of that where I was like, the movement's not correct. What are you, a zoologist? I am, yeah. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an all the ologists. I know everything about that. I was going to say also, when I put this movie in for this week, because we're doing horror movies all week, I was like, does this count as a horror movie? But it's actually under adventure, drama, and horror. I don't agree, and I was a bit disappointed with that. I want an actual horror movie this week, so I'm going to have to supplement by watching my own horror movie. This was a horrific incident true i wouldn't want to be trapped and again in that if you're thinking about it 
it is very Cujo and Cujo is a, a classic horror movie. movie. Yep. Yes. It just doesn't feel that way. So moving on to the cast, we've got Idris Elba as Dr. Nate Samuels. What did you think of him? I thought it was good. I mean, I like Idris Elba, but there were times when it felt a bit odd, like he was practicing. You mean? I don't know if you noticed any moments where he was just completely disengaged, but then again, I don't know, I don't know what he was going for. Certain lines and certain scenes, it could have been my imagination. It felt to me, well, his character is supposed to be a bit disconnected because they kept saying, he's the kids even, he's not with, you're not with us, Dad. True. Because he's thinking of other things. Apparently he was like a shitty uh, well, he's husband? a doctor, so I'm guessing he was devoting all of his time to his doctoring and kind of neglecting the family. He was checked out of everything apart from whatever yeah. he was doing. Yeah. And if, I feel like it was supposed to carry over into this trip because the daughters still noticed it at the beginning, didn't they? Like, True. Um, so maybe that was what he was going for, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes. He had that thing where if you've ever been to a gym with a quote-unquote personal trainer, which is complete bullshit... Even if you're paying them full price, they're not paying attention to you. No offense to all the personal trainers. If you can tell me different, that's fine. But my my own observations and experience is that they're talking to you and telling you to do the shit. And they are cranking their fucking neck to look at everybody and everything else because they are not engaged with what is going on right in front of them. They're like on autopilot, you right. know, like the da da just you you get what I'm saying? Like, or some dickhead at a party who's like talking to you, but they're like saying, yeah, 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 yeah. But they're cranking to look at the, everybody else in the whole room. That's how I felt it was a couple of times. No offense, Idris, but. No offense, Idris. And I'm sure if, again, <laughs> if you're going for the disconnected thing, it was absolutely perfect Academy Award winning performance. <laughs> True. Uh, who else we got? We got Shalto Copley as Martin Battles. He's Uncle Martin. I really like Shalto. I've really liked him since the first movie we saw him in, District 9. Uh, how do you like him? He's fine. I mean, it's a little bit just plain, don't you think? I feel like he fit what he was supposed to be. True. Very true. And he's uh, a South African man. He's got a cool accent. I've always thought he has a cool accent. He was a... A tough mother effer. He was tough. Let's say. He did not give up easy. No. I really enjoy him. I feel like I don't see him enough in things, but maybe I'm watching the wrong things. <laughs> I'm sure he's in things. Yeah. We've got uh, the daughters played by Iona Halley and Lee Jeffries. What do you think of the two daughters? I thought they were awesome. They were my favorite thing in the whole deal. When they weren't talking, I was waiting for them to talk again. I am... Um, had a problem, not with them, but with the characters, that whenever anybody told them to stay where they were, or <laughs> they just kept wandering off. I was like, stop one. Your dad just said, both stay there, and then there's only one of you, because one of you just wandered off to go and look at it. Right, look at something. but now if we're following through with this family dynamic, yeah, maybe they don't feel like they need to trust dad or listen to dad, see? The whole movie, I mean, I, I was supposed to have anxiety from the horror of the being... <laughs> The horror for me was, is that are those daughters going to split up and one wander off? When the uncle was injured, one of them just pissed off and went and helped him. Correct. But if she wouldn't have helped him. He would have been dead then yeah. instead of later. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, stop wandering off, children. If you're told, Listen stay there. to you. What are you? Like, you just love people telling you what to do? I do. <laughs> children need to be. Very uh, well. You know, very I well. will remember that. <laughs> This is directed by Baltasar Comico. I'm sure that's correct. And the Baltasar, I love your name, dude. He um, directed Contraband with Marky Mark, Two Guns with uh, Denzel Washington, and Everest, which we watched. Um, what did you? Oh, Everest had Idris Elba in it too, didn't it? I don't remember Everest. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, the climbing up Everest yeah. thing. Yeah. So, what do you think of the directing? I feel like it's very functional. And because it looks gorgeous, I mean, you can't hardly get a bad shot, can you? I no. mean, it's absolutely every tree is gnarly and the landscape is gorgeous. I mean, that's art direction. But to be able to put your people in, there's a little bit of spinny camera at the beginning, which I was like, oh, please, please, please. No, no, no. A little no. bit of what? Spinny camera spinning yeah, around. True. It was, yes. They got over that pretty quick. So I feel like it's functional. And I like a lot of the up closeness. There's a lot of getting right up close so that you're in a vehicle trapped with each other, but really 
like I felt visceral about the fixing the injuries and the sweat and the pain. And I felt like that was a really good choice. A lot of the time there wasn't a lot of like, you know, just look at everybody from a distance. Maybe that's why it all felt like, ah, when you, you know, when somebody was bitten or scratched or whatever, it looked hardcore because you're right up in there. All right. So IMDB reviews. What are those? There's a website called internetmoviedatabase.com. And you like to go there and they have reviews where just anyone in the world, and I mean any person, can put in a review out there. And they can rate them one to five stars. And you, one to four, one to five, I don't know. You like the one stars because it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Number one uh, person who gives this a one out of ten says, When this was advertised, I got so excited because of Idris. Boy, was I disappointed. Stay in the car, don't listen, and get out of your car in the wild knowing there's a lion that's going to attack you. Also, just stick your legs out, but you're okay after it's bitten you. (laughs) The girls go out for a walk in the wilderness. Oh my God, I can't take it anymore. I had to switch it off 40 minutes into the film. Acting is awful. Car is hanging off a cliff. But it's okay to get out as normal. Why, oh why, was this made? Thank God I didn't go to the cinema to watch this boring, boring, boring yawn, yawn, yawn. Well, it sounds like they agree with you. About don't get out of the car. Yeah, please. (laughs) We also... (laughs) This is really funny, actually, because what I said... You might think I wrote this next one. Are you ready? I thought you wrote that one. The disobedient kids ruined the movie. (laughs) These girls drove me nuts. They don't listen to anything their father says. (laughs) Even when their lives depend on it. They're always talking over him and asking him stupid questions. The movie would have been better without these are two annoying brats. If those two idiots are edited out of the movie, I give it a 6 out of 10. Mr. Elber is always good. And there's a lot of action and suspense. You can almost sense how hot it is in Africa. And without reliable communication, how fragile your life can be. Even if you're not being stalked by an angry lion who sadly had his pride murdered by a poacher. I mean, that's a very thorough thing, but I don't think they're terrible at all. I, I have to disagree. I think they were great. And I understand the dynamic. Like, dad doesn't tell us what to do. He wasn't even there when mom died of cancer, so screw him. We don't trust him. He's not like, you know, Mr. Dad who's coddled us our whole life. So this person, they're kind of half there. And you might have wrote this one. <laughs> waste of film, waste of time. Maybe you don't have the Me? That opinion. No, I would listen, never think listen. that. This one says, cheap knockoff of Cujo with a cat. <laughs> Watch Cujo instead. You'll enjoy it more. So you might have wrote that. I disagree that you would enjoy Cujo more (laughs) because I'm not sure what the quality is anymore, but um, it had good memories for me. I've seen it probably 10, 15 times in my life. All right. So we watched the streaming version, so we didn't see the extras, but we're going to give the movie Beast a score and I'm going to give Beast a five out of 10. See, I enjoyed it more than you did. So I'm going to give it a seven. Oh, you. Wow. That's that's a lot for this. You know why? Because... I understand that it's shallow and it doesn't have a lot going for it, but as an experience sitting there watching it, I was just really into it. So for a an hour and a half, I am in the savannah in La La Land watching my movie and enjoying the people and enjoying the possibilities. And I'm convinced of the, I'm not hundred percent convinced of the danger. Not that a wild animal isn't dangerous, but uh, there are lots of faults, but my experience in it, I just kicked back, I ate my popcorn, and it was a good time. So there you go. All right. So I'll I'll be the bad guy this week and give it <laughs> five out of ten. You'll give it seven. All right. Movie recommendations. I'm going with movies similar to Beast that I enjoyed more than Beast. So I'm going to give you Crawl, the alligator one. Remember that one? Yeah. Yeah, that one was really cool. You loved it. Yeah, I did really love it. <laughs> and I'm going to give you Jaws, which is the literally the best It's the best example of this type of movie, and it still is to this day, I feel. Like, it's hard to top it. Have you seen them all? I've seen one, two, and three. That's all I needed to see. Have you seen all the movies of this type? You said it's the (laughs) best. You have not. I have. You haven't for all time since, like, 1899. Yes. Okay. Whatever the first movie was. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to make a list of all movies where a character is trapped and some natural beast is coming to get them. I've seen them all. I don't know. You don't need a list. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And my recommendations are from the 90s, I believe it's 96, The Cable Guy, Eraser, Independence Day, Multiplicity, ew, and The Nutty Professor with Eddie Murphy. Multiplicity, I say ew, because... It's Michael Keaton making a clone of himself, and the clone makes a clone and a clone and a clone. And at some point, different versions of him, like, manipulate the wife to have sex with them. I just think, even when I watched it the first time, I'm like, ew. Like, it's not him. It was just gross. So I, I thought you were going to say different versions of him have sex with each other. Uh, no. Different versions of him, somebody in that group kind of manipulates the wife. She thinks it's him. It's Overboard's the same. And so even though I loved Overboard, the movie it essentially is creepy as fuck because Kurt Douglas, is that his name? Kurt, Kurt Russell, Russell. Takes this woman who's not his wife, convinces him that she was his wife, and then ends up you know, having sex with her when she's under the, because she's lost her memory. You need to go watch Overboard. If, if it weren't for that, it would be charming. The memory of it is always tainted by that so there's a lot of that if you go and look back at older yeah. movies there's a lot of like this is problematic probably but maybe. i mean even groundhog day is creepy when you think about it he stays in eternity oh, yeah. learning how to manipulate her just enough so that when the time comes he's cheated basically seems like a lot of work to go to <laughs> well he didn't have any control over yeah, that's true situation. he would have either done nothing or but then know. there was the one guy with the ooh and or deck guy and the kid the son who could go back and redo things, did the same thing essentially, but on purpose to trap this woman into loving him. That was in time, I believe. Yeah. Or ew. about time, one of the two. So all of them have that going on. So those are our recommendations for this week. I've been playing one new game this week. It's called Grid Legends. It's a PS5 racing game. You're a legend, Dave. And it's from Codemasters, the people who brought you the Dirt series and the Grid series. And... What they've done here is they've tried to make a racing game, when I say tried, because they, they did try, with a story. And the story is told in between each race, and it's full motion video, so it's like a TV show, but very short, you know, two or three minute scenes between the races. And it's about this underdog team in racing who are going through problems financially, and you're the new driver who's... they've hired to come in and try and turn their thing around so you have to win all the races which is normal for a racing game but then there's drama in between because sometimes accidents happen sometimes people get injured sometimes scandal happens and you just go through now problem i had with it was it's not very long it's like maybe three hours maybe the maybe the length of a long movie including you doing the races. But then when you're done with all the story mode, you can go in and there's a career mode, which is basically just a big list of races that you can do. So it does have a lot of race action and it looks awesome. Do you agree? You saw it. Yes. It's very realistic. And I said to you this week, that's not surprising to me anymore. All racing games look real. Like, because, I mean... You aim for making racing games look real, and then where do you go from there? I guess you go back the other way and make them look cartoony or make them look kind of weird. But this is called Grid Legends. I played it on the PS5. It's actually on the PC, uh, Xbox, PS5. And it's from Codemasters and EA. And uh, I had fun with the small amount I played. I also got the platinum on that Tokyo Ghostwire Tokyo game this week. You did. And that was a commitment. Thank God for that. Yeah, that was a commitment. I felt uh, at the end of it, I was like, whew. I thought it was going to be like easy, but it ended up being like 50 hours. So if you want to go for the platinum in Ghostwire Tokyo, good luck. 50 hours of your life down the toilet. Well, it was fun. It was. <laughs> so what's for dinner, said Doc? Uh, there's going to be some mild pizza on the horizon. That's it. And what is your advice? My advice is old fashioned. And some people aren't going to like it because it's not super sensitive and that's fine. It is if you really, really actually think about it honestly, like confront the reality of this advice. Okay. 
Life is full of amazing, wonderful things. We all know this. Amazing, wonderful things. It's crazy, insanely wonderful sometimes. And it's full of shit. Like, it's a shithole, right? Life, the planet, the universe. It's all, it just, it doesn't give a shit about anybody. We're just fodder for it to just keep going, right? So when bad shit happens, and I'm not quantifying this with any certain kind of bad shit, because it could be the most horrible thing that any of us could imagine, all the way down to, you fell down the stairs a few weeks ago, like I did, and which is not, you know, like it's not that big a deal. But here's the deal. Here's the thing. Just deal with it. This is my old fashioned advice. That that sounds like, you know, an impossible task and people don't want to. It's about confronting the nasty, horrible shit or the sort of semi inconvenient shit and whatever that requires for you to deal with it, not avoid it. You see, this is what I'm saying. When you avoid it, you pretend it's not there, you suffocate it, you stuff it down, you eat it, you drink it, you, you know, you abuse someone else because of it, because you're taking that energy and shooting it onto someone else in some way or form. It could be anything. It could be that you get treated like shit at your house, so when you go to work, you treat everybody else like shit, right? It could be any of that. Instead of doing that, deal with your fucking problem. And if it's dangerous or hazardous or it seems impossible, in this world, Somebody somewhere, there is something someone can help you with. I know it seems impossible. And if it is, I mean, if you're actually in a situation where it it actually is impossible, I can't imagine it, but it's possible. It's, you know, I guess it can happen. Yeah. Still dealing with it. If all you can do is deal with it in your own self and you think about it and you work it out and you think about it, whatever it is, unless it's something that's giving you imminent danger and bodily harm, that's a different situation. I'm talking about like disappointed that your job sucks and you've been there five years and it's not getting any better and blah, blah, blah. Right. So this is a thing where you could just feel like shit all the time and pretend like, well, I guess can't do anything, but you know, you can, you can either change your mind about it, right. Approach it a different way or change your job or Change how you do your job or change something, whatever, whatever the circumstance is. Just deal with it. Don't pretend it isn't there because that prolongs your suffering. And if you're spreading it out onto other people, prolongs their suffering as well. And it's not fair on the world. It's not fair on yourself. Like you deserve better than to just like lie to yourself. But so just deal with it. It's not going to, you're not going to like it. Right. I'm having to confront like at work. I have this manager person who I've just ugh. I have been. That's all I can say. It was like ugh. <laughs> for almost six years trying to figure out or avoid like avoid actual confrontation, even though I'm quite confrontational. And that could be part of our problem is that I'm not nice about shit, really. So whenever he comes and stands over my shoulder, I'll say, mm, you're just a little bit in my bubble there, sir. You know, no, I don't say sir. I'm that's a lie. I would say. His name, like you're in my bubble. Like, do you need something? Do you want something? You know, and it's hard to describe. Well, I started thinking about it. And instead of feeling like I want to avoid this person constantly, and I mean avoid, I don't even want to see emails with his name on it. I don't want him to come into my space. I don't want to walk past him when I go to the bathroom because inevitably he pops his head out from his cubicle and says, how's it going today? And I'm just like, I'm going to the toilet. Why are you talking to me? Like, I just have, ugh. So I started to think about it a different way. My expectations of him filling that position, you know, fit in a certain kind of package. It came with a certain set of my own rules, expectations, and the history of what that position meant from the person who was there before. What if my expectation, he was never meant to fulfill that? He wasn't hired for that exact precise job because he wasn't in reality. He was another thing, and then they piled on certain things, and then they gave him a raise, and they gave him this promotion, and voila, he has the label that the other person had, but his function and his perception of his function is not meeting my expectation. That does not excuse his really shitty, shitty way of doing his job, whatever his job is. It's like he doesn't exist, and yet his non-existence impacts everyone very negatively, right? So it's very hard to describe 
But then I started looking at it differently this past week. Like, right. So he's actually maybe possibly doing what he expects he should be doing and what the other people who hired him expect him to do. And I don't matter in this scenario, in this little recipe of workplace cake, right? I don't matter anymore that his position is different than what the one was before. Okay, so if that's the situation, I can disconnect and he doesn't bother me as much. I won't say zero, but now I think of him, I see him walk around, I see him approaching and I'm just like, we're just not, we're not on the same anything. And so whatever you've got to say, I will dismiss it and we'll just move on with our lives. So. I've kind of changed my perception. I've confronted it, accepting that maybe I'm part of that problem. So I'm dealing with it. Well, there you go. Long story short. <laughs> Long story short. <laughs> so I want to remind you about ascully.com. I was going to say on sidtalk.com, but that doesn't exist anymore. It does not. Maybe you can go on the Wayback Machine and look at sidtalk.com. It's a good question, though. What does it even look like now? I'm going to look. You still own the domain, probably, right? Yes, yeah, so it probably has a space holder. Yeah, so acecully.com, sidtar.com. You can catch us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can also go to anchor.fm slash after the show. You can go to Spotify. You can also go to Amazon Music or anywhere that podcasts are available. Email me at acecully, acecully.com. Don't email Sidtar. She doesn't want your emails. Yeah, so what <laughs> what happened to your website? Is the, It just says it's a GoDaddy. Uh, this domain is owned by someone else, and then it redirects and redirects oh, until I won't load it anymore. You don't even own the domain anymore. Yes, I own it. says it's owned, but right. it's not set up as you a website. You should point it at something like your Facebook page or something. Mm. Just so I, it, I don't care enough. I hate parking pages, though. Oh, uh, well, is don't it? go there. <laughs> 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 this is not a problem that I have to deal with because I don't care. So there you go. All right. Stay classy, Mr. Idris Elba. And uh, you did well in that big mole fight at the end there. Oh, it was rough. And I'm going to say, think for yourself or someone is doing it for you. <laughs> <laughs>